What's going on YouTube? Another Warframe video for you today. And I want to talk a little bit about the Shadow Stalker, how to get marked by him, what to do when he does invade your mission to come and kill you, general strategy around what to do when he is trying to kill you, and of course, what this man drops when you do kill him. So without further ado, let's get into this. I'm ready to talk about it. Now, as far as how to get marked by the stalker, how to give yourself a chance to be invaded by the stalker himself, what you want to do is go to any planet that has an assassination mission and you want to go and kill that boss. I'm not going to let Jackal sit there and yell at us, but any assassination mission is, it looks like an eyeball with a crown on top of it. Any of those missions, you kill the boss, there's a chance that you will receive a message from the stalker himself telling you that you done fucked up, essentially. Now, what this message looks like, if you go down to your communication and your inbox, you'll see a message that looks very similar to this, aside from saying the sergeant, it'll say whichever assassination mission you completed, whatever boss that was, it'll say their name up there but it'll always say your actions have consequences. You'll see him down here laying in the smoke, looking like he's just chilling in a sauna somewhere. Another way to see if you've been marked is to go to your profile and down here on the bottom right, it'll say marked for death by, and you'll see the stalker down there. If you don't have it, that means you're not marked. Go and fight some bosses. There's a very good chance within like three fights that you'll get marked. It does happen pretty frequently, while I'm on this topic, I should say that it does stack. Let's say you do 10 assassination missions and out of those 10, you get five messages from the stalker. So just know that you're always marked unless that icon is not there. So if we look at some of these weapons that he does have the chance to drop, which I don't have all of them. I do have the dread and I do have the despair secondaries. I don't have the hate scythe that he has a chance to drop which is a five and a half percent drop chance but i do have this nakana that does have the very beautiful blind justice stance mod i'm not going to display it um but just the animations in this stance mod alone are worth it i'm not huge on a lot of the sword stance mods but this one i approve very smooth some really cool animations and honestly it's, it's just a very swaggy, smooth sword stance mod, and I approve it. Out of all the other ones, Blind Justice is actually a really nice one. Now, if we look at the Dread, which is, there is a 37, 38% chance that this drops when you kill the Shadow Stalker. It's, it's a really nice looking bow, and as you can see, the arrows look more like razor blades, and there's a reason for that. That reason is... Well, let me take off Fanged real quick. The slash damage is, like, this is probably six times, seven, eight times more damage or proc than, than impact and puncture. The slash proc is just insanely good. This means if you have a bunch of enemies coming out of a door or a corridor or a bottleneck and they're just all lined up together, if you land one well-placed arrow, it'll just cut straight through all of them. Um, so it's really good in that avenue. Of course, it is a bow and arrow, so it's not going to be able to shoot very fast, but you can put speed trigger on and, and kind of bypass that a little bit. Now, another thing to pay attention to is critical chance at 50%. I took point strike off, but if I put it back on, if you missed it, it goes up to 125% critical chance, four and a half times multiplier, and that's just really good damage just alone right here this 37 21 that's some pretty good damage but this is what i took off when i first jumped in here which <laughs> all it does is plus 120 percent slash damage just look at that number 5500 and some change plus you stack that with the 125 percent critical chance and the four and a half times multiplier plus hello split chamber at 90 percent multi-shot this thing shoots at least two arrows, all doing 5,500 damage, plus they're all going to crit and they're all going to stack four and a half times. That is massive damage. This is a weapon that you want to have early game. I used this probably from MR4, MR5 to 
honestly, I might still use it today and I'm MR15. Like going back and looking at these mods that I have now versus when I was using this thing, this thing is insane, dude. This is probably at least a top 10 weapon in the game. Personally, it's a top three for me. I don't even care what anybody else says. This is a great weapon if you like bows and arrows. Now, as far as the despairs, like I said, I have them. I didn't really use them. I got them up to 30. One thing to notice though is the puncture damage is really, really good. I think that, um, no, I don't have anything boosting that. That is base, 129 puncture damage. Um, you can obviously boost that with a mod that, that would increase that number. And plus notice here that it's more of a status weapon than it is a critical weapon. So there is that. Now you can always mod this for crit uh, and leave status alone, but just base, it is a little bit more towards the status side at 25% actually than it is at the critical side. As far as a general idea of how to approach the stalker, you'll know he's coming into your game because your screen will flash like a really dark red. It'll flash and you'll hear like this, this almost like a very loud whisper, if that makes sense. It's almost like a little screech and then he'll pop up on the screen and he'll say you're, you know, he's coming for you. He always says something different. The advantage of having a lot of people, let's say it's a duo. If he's coming for you, one of the best ways to uh, just to approach fighting him is to not fight him because if you get in a melee battle especially early game you're probably going to lose really fast if you go down but not out or you die he'll leave he doesn't drop anything so even your partner cannot kill him he just leaves immediately so my best advice is if you're by yourself stay at a distance try and shoot him try and stay evasive you know shoot him do some aim glides try and bullet jump your way out of his general area and just try and take him on from a from a distance don't get too close especially if you're by yourself if you have a partner or you have a squad of people probably the same idea applies except if everybody's being ultra aggressive you can try and be a little bit more aggressive just be careful not to die if he's focused on you, if he's invading you, if you got the messages that popped up on screen, that means he's strictly going to focus on you. So your other teammates, whether it be just one teammate or three teammates, they can all kind of go ham on him. He will make himself invincible for a little bit, but he will pop back out of those stances and they can hack and slash their way into killing him. Once he dies, everybody gets those same rewards. So that's pretty much the video. If you get invaded, just make sure you know where he is at all times. Try and not get sideswiped by him. He is really quick sometimes, but just keep your distance. You know, don't get, at least don't get into a melee fight with him early on. If you're later on in the game, you already know how the stalker works. But for those newer players, do not melee him. He will more than likely kill you. And you cannot use your Tenno powers either. You cannot use your Warframe powers. He is completely invulnerable to any of those things. So keep that in mind as well. You have to kill him with your weapons, melee, primary, or secondary. I hope this helped. Y'all have a good rest of your day. This is the start of the week. This is Monday, so keep your head up. You know, we're trying to make it to Friday, make it to that weekend again. So y'all have a good rest of your day, man. I'll see y'all tomorrow.